Fog oven's pretty good. Priorities. I've got a riff for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send this mo- message because you know Tom's going to think about it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to get in there now. <laughs> There's no time to waste. Yeah, I haven't hung out with these guys for at least 48 hours. I need to dedicate myself to the group chat right now, honey. <laughs> I'm impressed them with my wit. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing them later. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to know I'm still the alpha dog. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the chat feeling hot. Mate, picking up Hamo, because I drove Hamo to the airport. I'm a, I'm a sweet boy. Oh, yeah, because you had to drive all the way back. I did. Did you drop Hamo off at the airport and then start driving home? Correct. That's so bleak. That's <laughs> so <laughs> sad. Yeah. And I was like, hey, why don't you just skip that flight and stay in the car with the boys? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. Uh, <laughs> did you try? Did you float it? Oh, yeah. Just like as a joke, but also like... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, don't you want to spend nine hours in this car for no reason? <laughs> I had, a, I had a great time at the airport and uh, the, on the flight home. I was very glad to fly. <laughs> you had a great time at the airport? Yeah, because yeah, I was hanging out. in one of the toilets. I was hanging out in the business lounge with uh, Cambo and Damien Power. Oh, that's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. And that clang, was clang. And then... Uh, did, wait, did, they, did you go in as their plus one or did you have <laughs> lounge access? I had access. Did and, you? Uh, yeah. Why do you have access? He's, he's, a, he's a bidder, this fella. Uh, I, I do lowball bids for business flights. And oh, I, you did. And I got it. But I also just got uh, gold on Virgin anyway, so I can, Huge. I can use it. Huge moment for the flogs. Yeah. yeah it's big. Is that all, all three flogs have gold somewhere? I got demoted this year. <laughs> 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 I'm still wow. now. <laughs> but you guys can take me into the lounge. <laughs> You're allowed plus ones. Uh, I don't know. Like, what if Cambo and Damien Power are there? <laughs> well, it was quite embarrassing because I was sitting with them and then a guy came up to me and he found him shot and goes, hey, joke guy. <laughs> what was do you remember when we were in the lobby before recording the Connor Burns episode and that guy came and told you that really rank joke? Oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was it was really bad. Oh, I was really hoping you'd remember it. It was uh, so horrific. No, my memory's shot to bits, but there was it was rancid. <laughs> really hot stuff there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> really good effort. Oh, we're back in Sydney. Fun. We're back <laughs> in the cabin. I really <laughs> wish I remembered <laughs> it. The kind of stuff that I need you, to, Tom. You're yeah, that is. Yeah, you're true. If there was going to be someone who's really going to remember something for more than 48 hours, yeah, I think I that's need, on me. The I mean, bank. If, if someone's doing the minutes for our conversations, <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Whitcomb. You're the that's, flog stenographer. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's Den Flogrunner? <laughs> no, nah, no good. If, not good. If we go into the Virgin Lounge and it's you two, Damo and Cambo, you'd be like, oh, that's Tom. He, he does our social media clips. <laughs> 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 no, but like, Thomas, I think I said five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> then you said, hey, me? hey, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. You called it a flog coffin? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I mean, good gear. I'd, I'd post a screenshot if I... I probably still will. <laughs> I want people to know. We're going to find a way to, to let people into the group chat. We've talked about this in the past, but we need I, to... I think they deserve it. Mm. I think once, once the Patreon's up, once there's a way to access us more... Holy shit. All right, sorry. I just <laughs> this. I, I was like, am I going to talk about this? Yeah, let's go. Don't we need a, a, f- a group chat that floggers can join that's separate from uh, also our one? No, I think they need to be in the the OG, when the authentic you, one. Seriously, they're going to get. We give them access. When you two are bickering, well, they're going to we'll see all of that. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> just like no wonder Dan's angry. <laughs> wonder if Tom brought the SD card this week. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's do a poll before every. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> just becomes the most passive aggressive group chat ever. <laughs> How do you feel about the expression pass ag? I don't mind it. I hate it. Yeah, oh. thank you. And I'm, and I'm a brev guy. <laughs> brev? <laughs> I'm a brevman. <laughs> you say a brev guy, I'm assuming you made a toasty machine. <laughs> <laughs> brev. I'm an a- abrev, an abrev guy. There it is. There we go. I thought you were shortening brevity, <laughs> not <laughs> abbreviation. <laughs> abrev. Because shortening abbreviation is a brev, which you should know if you're a brev guy. You know what Shakespeare said, brev is the heart of wit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which no. short for Whitcomb. <laughs> Pass ags. No good. That's not cool. Pass ag sucks. It's like Cosy Lives. Go fuck yourself. Mm. Don't, don't try and like, what is it? Infantilize like a genuine global. Cr- uh, anyway, I'll just read this out. <laughs> <laughs> Hot stuff. Damn it. I'm catching the bad gear. All right. Uh, check out this comment. I'm not going to say the name, but like just this is a comment. Is on this a- someone we know? No, no. It's no. just a comment on one of my posts about like doing a show in Melbourne on Facebook, right? I have purchased over 30 sticky tickets to your Hamilton show in July 24 for my 70th Hamilton show, Hamilton suburb, Newcastle, Newcastle comedy festival show. But Karen hasn't gotten back to me about the possibility of some kind of extra entertainment after your one hour show finishes at 8 PM. Seems the club, and we just got to enjoy the grammar here. 
Inverted commas, has no extra entertainment. Open bracket, unless the sound guy can drum up some music. Inverted commas, to keep us at the Gallipoli Club. Full stop, close bracket. (laughs) <laughs> Can you shed some light on this or have I drawn another tracky blank? No one has any answers. That was with an exclamation point. That isn't just me imitating you, reading out anything. <laughs> Hope you can help me, question mark. Thanks, Daniel. All right. So, firstly, what is a tracky blank? I assume yeah. he's talking about drawing a blank, yeah. but to, to convey that he's indeed a huge fan of mine. He he's mentioned, mentioned my signature Andy. track suit. Yes. <laughs> he could have put the word tracky anywhere in that sentence, really, and it would have made just as much sense. <laughs> anywhere. So wait. So he's coming for his 70th with 30 people, and he's saying to you, hey, it's not enough to just come and see you. Uh, we want extra. We want bonus stuff. What can you do about it? Correct. That's what? wild. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing. I'm like, is it that he's like, look, I bought 30 tickets to what is like a 200-seat show, mm. so I deserve... Bit Something extra. extra. Yeah. I think he's right. <laughs> I, I, I agree with him. What are you going to do for him? What are you going to do for him? <laughs> Just 70. Call up his wife. This get a few jokes you. to roast him. What are you going to do? Lap dance? But I mean, all, like, this is the thing. 30 people from a 70th coming to my show also sounds immediately like a bad booker. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not the demographic I target in any way, shape, or form. Yes. Well, you got to think 30 people at a 70th is going to be multiple generations, right? Like, you might have three generations of whatever this guy's name is. Yeah. You probably will. The whole fam. Yeah. But, like, if this is the thing, why not just book me to come to a set at your 70th later? Mm. Because that's the extra entertainment he wants. That's what he's looking for. Ah, we're going to go to the Hamilton Guzman A. Gomez. (laughs) Guzman Y. Gomez. Now we're talking. That's how I like it. Yeah. I read like Shakespeare. Just some $3 tacos. (laughs) Yeah. And then I roast him. Yeah. (laughs) What kind of of dumb bitch gets soft shell? (laughs) Hard shell forever, you dickhead. I don't know why I'm doing that voice for that. (laughs) That's all I got. Hard shell. What sauce? What sauce? (laughs) I mean, if you only end up with 40 people in the crowd and 30 of them are for this guy's 70th, then you'll be very happy to have them there. Well, I mean, we've already sold more tickets than that, but let's not worry about it. I'm just like, is this guy going to... Because Karen is like my point of contact at A-list. Like, that's my, like, if you would like to inquire. He's like going to A-list being like, I have bought a lot of tickets to one of your clients' shows. What have you got? Yeah, could you throw in Arj Barker, please? (laughs) (laughs) What have you done for me lately? <laughs> is the kind of vibe. But how, so how does he track down her contact? It's on my website. Oh. So it's not on like the event page. He has gone looking for you and then gone to contact your rep. <coughs> I, I assume it was just on the latest post on my Facebook fan page. And mm. he's been like, this is what's happening. And to be honest, I replied today and I was like, look, man, this isn't usually how it works, but I got nothing better to do. What do you want? Because yeah. I want to find out. I, I want to get to the bottom of I it. I think that's the right answer. Just ask him what he wants. Mm. And do it. <laughs> and do it. <laughs> Regardless of what he wants. <laughs> Whatever it is. It's his 70th. I want you to respect. fuck my wife. <laughs> I want to wear your tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wear it and go to town. Is that, is that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> I want to recreate Weekend at Bernie's with you. <laughs> Just take you in the tracksuit around Newcastle while you're perfectly still. <laughs> I just I don't I just don't know what you could want. Like, it's your seventieth. That's chill. You've brought people to my show, which is very nice, and I mm. appreciate the support. But I just would never think. But like, what else though? Like, is you it, want some B sides? Is it a show in a theater? Uh it's. I think it's like a club or a big pub or something. You're doing the show after. Because well, there you go. There's the extra entertainment. Yeah, we go. Well, dude, that's what I was going to pitch. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to bring those same thirty people to the next <laughs> show and pay for tickets? I'll comp yours. And, I'll, we've, and we've seen what Hammer will do for his fans after a show. I'll drug <laughs> him. I'll, I'll drug this I'll guy. I'll drug him. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of things you've said on this podcast, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I hope you're not as successful as you probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be me in the background of a hit piece on the project. <laughs> Andrew Hamilton admits to drugging fans years before. <laughs> Drink up, you old bastard. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Nobody remembers your 70th. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but I just, I just don't know what he could want. I think he's just like, does anything happen at the club after you're finished? Did they play some music or whatever? He's asking the DJ, right? Is the DJ going to do some... Well, I think I think he must have got like at least some response from maybe the club being like, after the show, there'll be the dance floor. Oh, yeah. You can go down to the Gallipoli Club dance floor. 
You've, you've never you've never danced with so many rascal scooters in your life. <laughs> I can't wait to be there to watch this whole thing unfold, dude. You won't be because this is going to be during your show. Oh, I thought aren't I, aren't I after you? Or what That's what I mean. Time? So this is the post show entertainment. I'm going to be oh, entertaining but I can this be man. There, but I can be there during your show for when you have to <laughs> <laughs> acknowledge this man's existence. Yeah. <laughs> Ask if it's anyone's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, thirty people! You guys look like you're here for an occasion. <laughs> what could it possibly be? Close brackets. <laughs> Parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> Do an air quotes with your fingers. Yeah, the whole show. weird times. Um, I had, did I tell you about the Bucks party that came to my show? Um, I had a Bucks party come to my show. So I, so I had Seren Jaymana message me mm. to give me a heads up that a guy he went to high school with was going, was had his Bucks party and 20 of them were coming to my show. Like, this was like in my second week. Is this Melbourne? Yeah. So it's a third of the crowd. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah, they've taken up the first two rows. They sat at the front. They sat at the the front two rows, and then one of them was dressed as Luigi. That was the buck. (laughs) Sick. That uh, is my spirit, (laughs) Nintendo animal. (laughs) And uh, Seren had very kindly given me the heads up, but he also sent me a photo of the buck earlier in the day dressed in like a full gimp suit. Which was just really great to have in the pocket. And so <laughs> when I, I started asking them like why they chose to come to my show, the show's called Shit Bloke. They were like, because we're all shit blokes just like you. And I instantly regretted naming the show Shit Bloke if that was the reason I'm, attra- I'm attracting my own people. I, I, I really like the idea that for the Bucks, they're like, all right, what well, we can even just get them to dress up as. We think we can all agree the gimp was a bit too much. <laughs> we need to tone it down a little bit. That was bit. daytime wear? The house party? <laughs> but out in public, we're back. We're cooling down to Luigi. <laughs> Look, we're going to be having a couple of drinks. Gimp suits are pretty dark. Like, you know, it's just a safety but, hazard, to be fair. He's going through the city in Melbourne. No one's going to see but, him. I had I that, that, to be fair, they were the right level of unruly. Like they they didn't derail the show at any point. Mm. Like they were close enough without fucking it up. But uh, I do have a story in the show where I talk about being in a sex dungeon, mm. and at that point, I pulled out the photo of the guy in the gib suit that Whoa. I had. Here's one I prepared <laughs> earlier. You fucking magician. <laughs> And so that was very handy to have that. So nice little note for anyone listening. If you bring your Bucks party to Hammer Show, he will prepare material. <laughs> <laughs> he will dedicate at Let's least part of the show that. to you personally. Let's not have to that. But what he didn't tell you was he also beat the shit out of that gimp after <laughs> while all the mates jerked off. <laughs> It was, was a big say, vibe. I was going to say close with a quick game of Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> In the gifts. <Gibson. laughs> it's a me. And zip it back up. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. It's one of those, I'm not a gimp, I'm one of those weird mushroom things. <laughs> <laughs> weird toad? Mar- oh, toad. <laughs> no, no, no. The, um, they were kind of like the villains in the Mario universe. They were little brown ones. You would jump on top of them. Why the little brown one's got to be the villain, Tom? (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. He's at it again. We're back (laughs) on. You know, like... uh, This is annoying. Yeah, I mean, Tom also named his show to attract the people he wanted. White collar, no... White collar, no darts. (laughs) Damn it, I wish that came out smooth. (laughs) Come on, mate. (laughs) Fuck. Uh, I I know the audio interrupted again. We have to start once (laughs) more. (laughs) I'm going to read out this bit. (laughs) What did you call it when I opened for you? I think it was the first night in Melbourne. You called it... Uh, no collar white jokes <laughs> or something. <laughs> dark dark collar white jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty close. Nice. You're right there, dude. The SEO on that would have would have found it. I reckon. Dark collar white. That jokes. thing. That's what I meant. Called the oh, umpa. Yeah, the oh, umpas. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And what color are they? I don't like really see tan. color. <laughs> <laughs> tan. <laughs> a khaki. Khaki. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had a Bucks party come through. It was funny because I got that bit about hating Bucks parties. And this guy's like, I got a Bucks party coming up in three days. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I haven't organized it yet. Wait, and I was, was like, well, the- I guess I'll see you Saturday. And they turned up. Was this <laughs> How many the- other were there? Nine. Yeah, wow. W- was this the one at the uh, the showcase we all did? At, I forget the name of it. With, um, at the brewery. Oh, Bod Riggy. Yeah. No, 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 no. There was someone in the front row who had a Bucks party come up as well, right? Oh, yeah. Or was that like the Bucks party? Mm. But it was funny. This is like a completely different group. And he just like didn't have any like activities lined up. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll see you. <laughs> and he actually turned up and was like, hey, man, I'm back. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. 
<laughs> so we're here. Anytime I've been, I've been at the comedy store and there's been a Bucks party, they've usually been a nightmare. Like they're usually bad. Mm. Because they're usually so pissed, they don't really want to be there. And they can't maintain attention for like the duration of a show. Oh, they want it to be about them. Yes. But these guys are right. They sat in the back. They were very good. I made reference to the fact that the guy come there already and he came back. It was pretty red hot because he looked like Jesus. And the first show he came to was on Wednesday and the thing was on the Saturday and I was like, boom, boom, gotcha. <laughs> Three days later. Remember the last time this bloke planned a party? Not good stuff. Am I right, folks? <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. It's the Wednesday to the Saturday. It's, well, well, Jesus died on the Friday and came back on the third day. Look, so I don't want to be crude, Hammer, but you're starting to sound like a Jesuit scholastic. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that's the fourth day. You know? <laughs> Are you trying to run your Good Friday joke again? Is that where we are? <laughs> More like a bad Friday, am I right? <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. It's good. Uh, so it's always good to have some jokes based on like the, the lunar calendar, <laughs> you know? Wait, is that the lunar calendar? No. Lunar calendar is the Asian calendar. Is it? Oh, help me. No. Just the one, there's the one based on the moon. The Ro- Roman calendar? No, that's our one. Isn't it? Or are we the Gregorian? 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 Oh, God. All I know is, remember we were doing Russian history and they're like, this is the date of the thing, except if you go by the Russian calendar when it was on this date. And you're like, why do we need to know this? <laughs> Come on, mate. Actually, in terms of annoying people at comedy shows, I had some teachers at the running joke last night and one of them was really drunk and, and a bit chatty, like kind of fun, but also annoying. And then at the end, they were like, one of us is the boss. Which one is it? And I'm like, the one who spoke the most during the show. Oh, yeah. Because whoever's in charge will always talk the most at a comedy show because they're used to being heard. Oh. And I was fucking spot on. Oh, yeah. And then she was like, what's with the tracksuit? You're so red. I think you should do something different. And I was like, all right, have a lovely night. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're bringing 30 people for your 70th. Fuck off after the show, please. <laughs> yeah, you guys need 21 more friends to get some after show entertainment, I'm afraid. <laughs> and then I'll do whatever you want. Dude, I'll do a strip tease with a tracksuit. <laughs> unzip, unzip, unzip. Did I say about that? Fuck, that was Adelaide. These guys just yelled out, like, take it off, take it off, like 15 minutes. And I'm like, I'm not taking it off. And then at the end, I unzipped it like halfway through. And, like, and I zipped it back up and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> but did you unzip it this not in My comedy to... has devolved into. Mm. <laughs> but you just unzipped it just naturally. You didn't, you didn't uh, acquiesce. Oh, no, like as a joke, I just took it like halfway oh, down yeah, and okay. then I like, back up. I was like, oh, fuck right. off. And they were like, zip, zip. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, look, you are annoying, but I respect it. <laughs> Well, like, you, you can't have, you know, frequently been a part of a drunken rabble during your life and then not respect the game. No, you know? yeah, you got to acknowledge it. It's just like, you're all in there you're yelling the same thing over and over regardless of response. Good effort. Yeah, you know, sometimes you're like in like a, you're in a beer garden and you know you're being that group that everyone's hating and you're like, mm. well, we just got to lean into this right now. That's, <laughs> that's who we are, I'm afraid. Dude, I had that in, uh, when I was in Spain, like before I went on exchange. Why did I say that like, hammer? when I was in Spain, like this Spain. gave it a bit extra. Um, it was a youth hostel and everyone else in the room was Brazilian. And I was like, well, either I could be woken up by these cunts every day at 3am when they turn the lights on and start playing fucking Zumba music, or I can just hang out with the Brazilians. And I did that. Yeah. And it was just such a pro move. To hang out with the Brazilians? Yeah. Just be like, look, I'm just going wherever you guys are going. We're just, we're just partying now. Yeah. Okay. And that was, that was sweet. And then like two other people moved into the dorm who weren't Brazilian. They're like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, hey, go. <laughs> <laughs> <Quick> go. <laughs> <laughs> that same Bucks party, when I, when I started the show, I was like, the best way to win them over is by just acknowledging their existence at the start. Mm. And I, so I got the Buck on stage and I sculled a beer with him. And I absolutely demolished him, um, which was also part of my tactic to let him know I was the true alpha of the room. <laughs> I love that you like got the buck in a dick measuring contest, knowing you had the longest. <laughs> and we're just like, now sit down. Yeah, yeah, I swear yeah. what has happened is you're like, a whole bucks party has come to my comedy show. How can I make sure this keeps happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe so. But all I know is that they behave themselves like absolute gentlemen for the rest of the show. Really? Ish. Yeah. Ish. And so I would gladly welcome any future Bucks parties. <laughs> Use the code Bucks Party at checkout. Bucks parties, bar mitzvahs, 70th birthdays. You've got a big group. I will handle them. What, a, what about hens parties, brother? 
Oh. And bat mitzvahs. <laughs> Was the reason the buck helped himself? No chicks. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the reason the buck handled himself so well in the sculling contest? You spiked his drink. <laughs> did, did you drug him? I fucking <laughs> drugged him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm pretty sure they're all on cocaine. Do they always are? Your fans? Yeah. I did have a guy who fucking got up like four times in a forty. Five minute show to go and like I was like pretty sure he was doing bumps. I was mm. like just just key bumping the audience that would distract me less than getting up. That would distract you less. Yeah, it would be like oi. No, nah, I would distract me less seeing a guy just key bump rather than get up every ten minutes. But I assume like if someone key bumped in a crowd at your show, everyone else in the crowd would be like, oh, give us a bit. <laughs> Maybe it still would distract me less than the getting up and down. It'd be like the seagulls in yeah. Finding Nemo. <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> I think it would just be hard for what I can only assume is a litany of uh, off-duty police officers that are probably also in your crowd. <laughs> Absolutely. There's listening devices in the ceiling, there's surveillance. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot to record my show. Actually, officer. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I have the tape for tonight? Yeah, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I always record my shows because I'm always wearing a wire. <laughs> Uh, I was at a, a showcase at Basement uh, Comedy and there were these three dudes in the front row who look exactly like the kind of dudes who would do cocaine and they mm. all got up at the same time to go to the bathroom at the same time and then return to their seats one by one with like a 20 <laughs> second gap in between. <laughs> you got to respect it. Uh, these yeah. guys just don't know how to like not be obvious. Mm. Would you like to put any tips out there <laughs> from an expert who famously never got caught? <laughs> <laughs> you got. It's hard when you're going into the uh, bathrooms where you can see, un, like you can look below to see that there's more than one pair of feet in, the, in there. Mm. You know, <laughs> because bouncers will check the bathrooms. They'll see that. They'll knock on the door, and then you can just they can hear two idiots in the bathroom going shh, <laughs> 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 like as if like if you just hush for a minute, like it would just go away. Dude, famously, uh, I was in I was in a bathroom here. I can't be saying so with Rohan Ganju at a at a at a at the festival club. You know, having a good time. And um, I mean that. <laughs> I got to be more specific <laughs> on that. That was pretty gay. <laughs> Doing illegal th- shit. That's also no. Um, <laughs> I can yeah. explain. So yeah, we're we're in there we're in there for cocaine reasons, and uh, it was just like, oh, they're going to see our feet. So Ganju pulled a pretty sweet move, which is just stand on the toilet. Yep. So his head was poking out the top of the cubicle. <laughs> just like Muggleton, you done yet? <laughs> <laughs> good gear. I thought you. I thought you were going to say it was you. You were almost doing one of those like three kids in a trench coat things, where like, you know, yeah. Rowan got up on my shoulders <laughs> and did a line off my head. Yes, your, your head's out the top, but like the pair of feet, but they're turning the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy's tall <laughs> and high. He's so I can see up his nostrils from here. <laughs> You're doing it's a like, line off the door frame <laughs> by chopping yeah. it up. <laughs> It's like bloody thread bow in those things. <laughs> so you were doing a line off his cock, right? No, I was just saying it was a sweet move. Uh, I like to stand on the cubicle. Ooh. I thought it was funny. Just like, look, we all know why we're here. <laughs> no one's going to be a fucking snitch. It's the comedy festival. True. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we, there's there's been a news story. Segway sitch. Here we're we on. Sitch. Here we we're go. talking about annoying things at comedy shows. And how could we forget the Australian news cycle centered around stand-up comedy for this week because Arj Barker kicked a baby out of his show. <laughs> baby on board. Yep. Little little <laughs> baby crying and then the story got turned into like that he kicked out a breastfeeding mother. It's just for breastfeeding. Yeah. She yeah. was a mother hammer. Never forget this. Yeah. It wasn't the baby. Yeah. Who gives a fuck about the baby? This poor mother. <laughs> Just trying to breastfeed in the front row of a comedy show, a seat she chose in order to be discreet. Yeah. I famously put in all of my promo at the festival, breastfeeding welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I also say children welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Drop them off. It's, it's the mother I have problems with. Leave the baby. If you, if you bring any kids to my show, I'm happy to entertain them afterwards for free. <laughs> <laughs> Just contact my management. It's either end of the age spectrum, the super old and the super young. Get them in. Uh, every comedian in town that has a bit where they've had a baby in their crowd has posted it in the last 24 mm. hours. Every other comedian seems to have been quoted in news, some news story with their take. And yet the flogs <laughs> remain unquestioned. I know, yeah. Mm. Surely you need us 
It has to provide a bit of. You need the hot take of three perspective. Dudes. Yeah. Mm. What would you have said? What's the soundbite, Dan Muggleton? The soundbite on this when the Daily Mail call up to say, "What did you think about the Ash way the speaker?" Ash Barker kicking the baby out of the show. Yeah. The baby's crying during the show. You're like, "Hey, this is this is a disruption. Just just take take the baby out and murder it. <laughs> <laughs> take the baby out permanently." So it can't damage any other observations in the future. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's people saying, oh, he shouldn't have just like said it to her on stage with the mic. Could he have done it more discreetly? I, I, I don't know. Oh, sorry, guys. Just one sec. He puts <laughs> the mic down, leaves the stage, whispers to the mother, fuck off. <laughs> I don't. Sorry, I just wanted to be discreet. I don't know if you know, but some lady had her tits out of the front and I wanted to see him up close before he kicked her out. I don't know why she was crying so much. He seemed to be very polite about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't make a big deal of it. He made it very quiet, whispered in her ear. From what? I could hear. Uh, yeah, it was just like I don't know. It, it just I think anyone with common sense is just like the baby was crying. It was disrupting the show. He was like, "Hey, sorry, can you just go?" Mm. And people like, "Oh, so." But the funny thing was, my favorite thing because I read the I read the article uh, on the drive home, long drive, very straight roads. So, so. The mother, her quote was like, and we'd seen another show during the festival, Dave Hughes. And the baby made noise during his show and he made a very classy joke about it and then moved on. And I'm like, so what you're saying is the baby's already disrupted one show. <laughs> and then you're like, let's take it to another one. That seemed fine. Yeah. Like, did you see this mother has then gone on to like every media outlet in the country mm. on like a media campaign, interview campaign, and she got interviewed by the project... And mid-interview, the baby was making so much noise that the interviewer, Sarah Harris, asked if the dad <laughs> could take the baby. <laughs> because the, Is that real? Yes, That's this actually so happened. <laughs> While lampooning Arj Marker about kicking out a baby, she kicked the baby out of the interview. <laughs> and I'm like, what's happening? And so there's just like the, the project got roasted. Like Dude, that savagely, would've, that would have been maybe the funniest thing ever on the project. The baby's crying. Could the dad maybe come get the baby? Arj Barker comes in, <laughs> scoops it up, takes it out. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> scenes. <coughs> the nut farm in local cinemas till uh, probably next week. Let's be fair. But the irony was not lost on people who mm. were like so because the interviewer Sarah Harris was getting irked that the baby was making so much noise. Mm. And, w and everyone was like, oh, I guess this must have been what happened to the comedy show. That's pretty fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is weird to like, in your campaign to prove how much of a victim you are, have social proof proving the opposite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just like in a live TV crowd with the ability to edit, it's mm. still annoying. Yeah. And she's like, you don't mind if I breastfeed, do you? <laughs> <laughs> we at the project would never tell a woman when to breastfeed. And then Arj Barker comes in and <laughs> sucks on them titties. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a baby at my show like on Saturday night, my second last show, my second last show, and I didn't even know there was a baby in the audience till mm. about maybe thirty five minutes in, mm. and I was telling a story about me being in a sex dungeon, which I was mentioning earlier, and halfway through that story, I heard like just it wasn't crying, it was like just baby noises, mm. just like give it a go, uh, <laughs> go on then, mate. <laughs> Make some baby noises. Sitter of the mind. Come on, Hammer. <laughs> Here uh, it is, mate. Pa. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, keep going. <laughs> Gotta be more than that, mate. Mama. <laughs> I've never seen you get uncomfortable before. <laughs> An audience member was like, hey, can you simulate blowing cocaine up my ass? You're like, yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, make baby noises. All right, go on. It's a bit personal, that. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually reserved for my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <Crook gear. laughs> so I, I was like, I was like, wait, is, is there a baby here? And they, they, were, they were right at the back, at the very back of the show, mm. and it was just like, yeah. And uh, I was like, well, this is the first time. This is the first for me telling this story with a with a baby present. And uh, they were like, don't worry, mate, too young to understand. And I was like, well, thank God for that. And we just moved on. The baby had to be at the back of the room because it wanted to leave every 10 minutes to do cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a bump of one of those little plastic keys. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not mention that part of the story? The <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> the parents like dangling the keys, but I was like, just fucking give me that. <laughs> I've heard of cocaine bear. Now, <laughs> cocaine, cocaine, cocaine baby. <laughs> They're going to comedy shows. <laughs> They're ruining it. <laughs> Dude, but yeah. it was I, I had a baby in my show. Uh, in the pram. 
Because I was just like, I, I do that thing that sometimes like I stand on like a chair and I'm like kind of just roaming around the crowd having a nice time. Is the baby like a noise? pram? Was the baby noisy? Silent. Mm. Dead. I was worried about the health of that baby. It was so mm. quiet. Seriously, like silent throughout the entire show. Uh, Which isn't, I, I found quite upsetting. Because I would like to think during my comedy shows, I elicit enough laughter, at least at points, to rouse a sleeping baby. Yeah, yeah, well, you're like, like, oh, open the pram. <laughs> show me the pram. There's no baby in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw Fatty posted a take like that, which was mm. that like he's had a baby in his in his audience before, and they were uninterrupted because you could you could hear a pin drop in his audience. Mm. <laughs> it was just dead silence for fifty minutes. That's funny. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. I don't have a baby story, but I do have an Arj Barker story. Well, here we go. When I was uh, when I was eighteen, I lived in Edinburgh <laughs> for the year. When I was eight months old, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a history. <laughs> Here's a repeat My mother offender. was feeding me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. Tom's mother didn't breastfeed. <laughs> and then the Arj- maid, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, the wet nurse. Consuela. Consuela was breastfeeding me. And Arj Barker. Burst in to do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, <laughs> Good gear. When I was 18, I was at, uh, living in Edinburgh and we went to the Edinburgh Fringe and I went to go see Arj perform. And, like, I think because. In Australia, in like the late 2000s, whenever I saw videos of Arj Barker, it was always like him at the Opera House or him at the Enmore or something. Mm. He was so big here. Mm. And then uh, went to go see him at the Fringe and he's doing like a 100-seat room, which to me, knowing nothing about the Fringe, I was like, what's this is so weird? Like I thought he'd be in this huge kind of theatre. Anyway, I was just very excited because I loved Arj Barker. I loved his stand-up. I loved Flight of the Concords. Yep. And uh, I really wanted to, I wanted to meet him afterwards. So after the show, he's kind of been the, the alley behind. He's talking to these other fans. And I'm with my mates. We're all 18. And my mates especially are super pissed. And I'm like... Wait, oh. You're all 18? We're all 18. He would have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> 15 plus, he's okay with it. <laughs> so there's like... A, there'd, be like there'd be like six of us. And everyone else wants to leave. And I'm like, no, I want to I wanna meet him. I want to get a photo with him. And uh, my mate is like, I can just kind of tell... He's just made the decision. He's going to ruin this for me. So uh, I just went to these two, this two, uh, this couple. It's going on like I think I can kind of tell a little bit too long for his liking. They finally leave, and then I go to start talking to him. And my six mates who couldn't give a shit about this guy come with me, and it's just so awkward from the outset. Like all my mates are trying to like talk at him. It's not going well. And my mate goes, "Hey Arch, do you want to hear a joke?" And yeah. by this stage, we've all been talking about a couple of minutes. Arj Barker like has his phone out. Like he's kind of texting as he's talking to us. <laughs> help. And, it, and he goes, <laughs> someone help me. <laughs> and he goes, uh, oh, yeah. And my mate goes, what do broccoli and anal sex have in common? If you're forced to have it as a child, you'll hate it as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've run that one down. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you guys enjoyed it a lot more than Arj Barker did, who continued to stare at his phone and he goes, ah. And then my mate goes, oh, you didn't you didn't like that one? And Arj goes, oh, look, man, when you're a comedian, you hear a lot of jokes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a very awkward photo with him, which you can probably find actually. Maybe we'll chuck it on the Instagram. And uh, and that was the story. And that was I, the first and last time I met Arch Barker. I, I until I brought him. my baby to his show last week. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see him at a gig, and me and my mate were so excited to see him. Afterwards, we like we're both like twice his size. We like went up like, "Hey, Arch, can we get a photo?" And he was like, "He's like, yeah." And so we got this photo, but he looked like terrified. In the photo. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel like we just ganged up on him. So uh, you know we're not all uh, we're not all built to interact with the fans uh, when they attack us aggressively. Not like you. No, <laughs> you are quite literally built man. to interact with the fans. Man of the people. I mean, one thing I do like about that is I've also seen Arj Barker live like before I became like is it like one of the first shows you ever seen? Yep. Yeah, it would have been the same. And yeah. dude, like, I think it's fun that the baby is carrying on that tradition. <laughs> Arj Barker is the first comedian every Australian sees live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. no, that baby oh. saw Dave Hughes. Oh, and, well, damn it. And boy, did he love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was 18, and I was 18 or 19, and I was like one of the first, the first live comedy gigs that I would go see it was Arj Barker. So, yeah, I remember I was 19, flew down to the comedy festival and saw Arj Barker. And it's funny because like back in the day with Melbourne Comedy Festival, we used to fly at the town hall steps because mm. like that was where people kind of looked at the shows on the boards and stuff before it was all just buy online, turn up at the venue, you know, mm. like no kind of communal point. And I just remember there'd always be this like, huge line and you'd be like, going, and, like people would be like, oh, I want to see my show. And they're like, oh, we're here to see Arj Barker. Mm. And you'd be like, oh, fucking basic bitch here to see Arj Barker. And then every time I'd be like, fuck, that's who I saw. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's a very good comedian. Yeah. A very, a very nice introduction to the comedy festival. Mm. There you go. Been around a long time. Yeah. You know, it hasn't been around a long time. That baby. Babies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should probably do an ad read. Do you reckon? Now, now that we're at? Now that we've solved, now that we've solved babies. So we've solved baby the babies. Mm. All right. We, uh, oh, wait, I, I didn't say your, did we even get your hot takes? It was just mine. Then everyone just kind of, we just started talking. Oh, that's the only take, isn't it? It's like, I, like, I don't know. I think it's one of those things that everyone who I've heard discuss that seems to have the same perspective, even like online, where it's just like, why would you bring a baby to that thing? Also, and it's like over 15, why did they let her in? They should have just said, hey, sorry. Yeah, I think it's like, but people shouldn't be encouraged to bring babies to gigs. But if they, for one reason or another, do end up bringing a baby, it's on them. If your baby starts to make noise, you should get the fuck out of the room. Yeah, just immediately. Yeah. Just go. And I'm, then, like, yeah, if it's an ongoing issue, don't come back. If it's if they can be quiet again, come back. Like, in, I, in, Have I told you this? In the UK, I did baby gigs. It's like called gigs. BYOB. Oh. Bring your own baby comedy. Yeah, right. And it was just literally you in, like, the middle of the day, like, like 110 mums, like, four dads, a couple of grandparents, and then, like, quite literally, like, 70 babies. Mm. And you were just doing your set. As they were free range. Free range. I didn't have to hold them. They had like play mats and shit. And they were just like going. So you're there to entertain the parents Correct. while the babies do whatever they want. Correct. And what gear are you doing? Your club set. Yeah, really? They're like do not change anything. Oh, wow. Go as hard as you'd go. Yeah, okay. Because they're just like, you know, mums, like, you know, they get trapped at home. They get stuck in this weird like kid cycle. And they're just like, they just want to cut loose. Like, you know, they're drinking champagne and shit. They're going for it. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's different, because, obviously, because the parents know, right? Like, all the parents are there knowing that if there's any noise for the babies, like, that's what they signed up for. Totally. Yeah. As opposed to if a gig says 15 plus and then there's one, some fuckhead baby. That's what I mean. It's, like, yeah. totally different. But it was just funny because, like, yeah, like you just do this gig just to, like, do this, to the, um, some baby noises just make some more. <laughs> It is like, anyway, so yeah, it's nice to be down here. Keep going. It's nice to be down here. <laughs> nice to be down here. <laughs> and there's like this kid just like kind of charging the stage in a crawl and it like grabs oh. the mic stand. You're like, fuck off, cunt. Right. Like, you know, and it's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really good gear. Really fun um, stuff. I see Husey posted that he's going to do a Mums and Bubs gig like next week. Fucking unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who's opening for it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wait, imagine is, if I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's Marge actually did. amazing. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> All right, shit. Anyway, sorry. Add a red. What Adder- do we got? All right, I got one for Hammer this week. Exciting. It's, uh, yeah, not as long as I'd usually go, but I, I think I'm pretty happy with it. The, the, the Flog Cabin, obviously, brought to you by Pilot Men's Health. All right, so Tom's written one for me. Uh, hey there, floggers. Andrew Hamdog, Wolf Wolf Hamilton <laughs> here. <laughs> It can be embarrassing to admit, but erectile dysfunction is a problem because... Oh, fuck, I don't, I'm having trouble reading. Um, it can be embarrassing to admit, but erectile dysfunction is a problem which I am intimately familiar with. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had to cut sex short because of problems getting it up. <laughs> That's why I recommend Pilot to every guy that fucks me. LAUGHTER <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now I'm one of the most popular guys at the local park's public toilets. <laughs> These days, when I see a flaccid penis, I don't get self-conscious. I just pop a pilot in the glory hole and wait for that little blue pill to do its thing. Thanks, pilot. Go to pilot.com.au and experience it yourself today. Use the code FLOGGERS20 for $20 off. Pilot. Hard. Made easy. Just like me. <laughs> Here we go. It was about time we had a message for the uh, the gay community. <laughs> it was right there the whole time. Yeah, no. I'm frustrated I missed it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Dude, we've been talking about fucking chicks badly. <laughs> what about fucking dudes well? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Genius. Uh, it, was just, it was just reconceptualizing what we were doing as flogs. What do we got? What else, what else were we talking about? I was trying to remember because we had things. We, you, uh, Hammer, we, you had a thing. Hammer, uh, what did I have? Your sleep a study? Gay chicken. Oh, gay and chicken? Sleep study. Gay what do you chicken, want? Gay sleep chicken study. or sleep study? Uh, I so, kind of uh, like the sleep study. Oh, I wanted to hear about the gay chicken. All right. Wait, well, wait, but so, because the gay chicken is a bit you're working on. Is that right? Yeah, but it's based on a story. I, I'm just trying to build it out. But the, it was just when I was like 21. Sorry, I was, can I just quickly? Is this... I know I'm just trying to work out because in my mind, this is either the story about a chicken that is gay 
Or is it a story about the game of gay chicken? Are you serious? I was going to say that as like, what would a dumb cunt maybe think of the possibilities here? So how could you know the chicken was gay? I want that like, to be Like, was it rainbow colored or like... I want it no, to- Tom, this is not a story about... A gay chicken. Poof, about poof to poultry. This is about... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the festival name for next year. <laughs> Just checking when that was. <laughs> that's one of those ones we're going to have to remove. Oh, really? Because I've got to say that on stage tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's how there's no babies in. <laughs> you know how influence, <laughs> easily influenced they are. It was not a homosexual chicken. It was the game of gay chicken. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was 21 and... Uh, Why I are you staring off wistfully into the distance <laughs> throughout this? So I was 21. <laughs> I, I was on Truman Oxford Capote, Street. one of my favourite writers. I was on Oxford Street. I was wearing a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> I was experimenting. And uh, <laughs> I was with my mate Danny and we got kicked out of a bar on Oxford Street because we were too pissed. And we were trying to get into other pubs, but I think we were just struggling to get into one because we were too pissed. And we got to a gay bar on Oxford Street, um, which is fine. I'm happy to go into a gay bar. <laughs> 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 uh, you know? Uh, <laughs> Can you just, whenever you allude to anything gay, say that <laughs> after? Which is totally fine, by the way. Which it's is like, anybody who introduced him his boyfriend, which is cool. Uh, the beers are still cold. We're doing Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's anything wrong with that. No, not at all. Uh, I was I was going more for like uh, Norm MacDonald's when he was tell that. The, the tricolour ball. Oh, about, yeah. about women's sport, you know, mm. which is fine nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this guy said to us, the bouncer said, sorry, fellas, you can't come in. It's couples only tonight. I I think he didn't want you to come in. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any bars have been. Yeah, couples only. Well, you don't know all this, the rules of these gay bars. You That's know? true. I don't um, know all the rules. But this and one, if anyone told you that I do know all the rules, <laughs> they're lying. <laughs> I certainly don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we looked at each other and without saying anything, we were like, "That's fine. We're a couple." Mm. <laughs> you know, I think we looked at each other and like tele- telepathically we were like, "How badly do we want this?" Like, and we, <laughs> by the way, just for anyone wondering what this is, another beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> How badly do we want another beer? <laughs> <laughs> and we both agreed telepathically that we both were still thirsty. So mm. uh, I said, "That's fine. We're a couple." And he looked at me with this like look of disbelief, just like, "Really." And I was like, yeah, like, what, what, you don't believe that we could be a couple? And immediately we knew this was like just one of the worst lies we've ever told. And then he was like, oh, okay, then prove it. <laughs> and so I turned to my mate, Daddy, and we slowly started to lean towards each other to kiss. And <laughs> It's bouncing standing there like, this is the most idiotic <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And we're getting closer and closer. And like our lips are like, you know, that really tight, like... Pursed. Pursed. You're so pursed. pursed. <laughs> and we're leaning down. Pursed like your assholes were at the same time. <laughs> closer, on this and like, this guy must have been sitting there like, this is just, this is nonsense. And then we got about an inch away before we pussied out. We are like, nah, we can't do it. And uh, he was like, have a good night, fellas. Uh, but... That normal gay chicken, it's you versus the other guy. This was us two versus him, you know? I mean, really, you both should have kissed him. Because <laughs> then he would have definitely let you in. But uh, it just made me think about just how If you've been funny. really smart, you should have gone, why won't you kiss me in public? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He hasn't even told his parents yet. <laughs> so... I'm going to go fuck the first guy I see. <laughs> Two calm drafts, please. <laughs> but gay chicken, it's a game. Um, you know, we've, we've all played with our mates before. Mm. Um, I've, uh, I've done it both ways. Uh, there's... <laughs> 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 well, all right, <laughs> this is getting gayer. Uh, both ways, <laughs> top and bottom. <laughs> there was, there's kissing gay chicken and then there's just like putting your hand like on your mate's leg. And I do like, that all the time. There we go. I'm very comfortable and with that. Going Keep higher, going. Keep and going. Higher, and higher. Yeah. And higher. But you know, that's, that's the, the, there's the clip. Just so yeah. you know, I won <laughs> <laughs> very comfortably. Oh, yeah. And I got to about here, I was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. no. Hey, hey, hey. I've done much gayer in jail. But uh, <laughs> here we go. But, <laughs> what, like write a book <laughs> <laughs> about how you felt? <laughs> I write food reviews <laughs> and jokes. Oh, yeah, because gay dudes never write <laughs> food reviews. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's really uh, funny. My best mate, he can't like I got like I got like two best mates. One of them I could you know touch his penis and it would be fine. Mm. But the other one, like I'll like do the thigh thing and be like, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" And he just can't. He's like, "With other dudes, I can do it, but your hands are so soft." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, my my theory for a long time has been the guys who are the more homophobic usually are the closeted gays. Mm. That's your theory, huh? Mm-hmm. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> Uh, I came up with it because uh, <laughs> of a story that I probably shouldn't say on a podcast. <laughs> you just look outside. <laughs> is you look down, peering is in there? through the first floor window. <laughs> uh, I was at a party at uh, a Bucks party at a bunch of us. Wait, so is this covered by NDA? Let's get <laughs> let's get out in front of it for once. A bunch of mates did a human shelverpede where we shelved each other with an MDMA <laughs> cap up the ass in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and one guy who refused to participate uh, then left the Bucks party, his best mate's Bucks party. He left it in protest. Mm. And we're like, well, he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> For the last time, Hammer, he's not gay, he's in recovery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hammer, I'd high five you right now, but one of my hands is very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dude, human shelverpede. Well, it's really unfortunate to know precisely what the episode's title is going to be. <laughs> we can't name it that. Uh, <laughs> no, why can't we name it that? Uh, I'll get in trouble. For what? <laughs> you didn't say who was uh, there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who are you? Who are you protecting? Are you protecting the person that left, or are you protecting the people who were involved? Um, I think he was protecting the front of the shelverpede. There was kind of a. There was a. There was a <laughs> the centipede of. There was a kind of silence. I think over the over the whole thing, we weren't supposed to talk about it. Who do you think? Wants, who do you think is more homophobic? The person who demands to be at the front of the shelverpede. Or one who demands to be at the back of the shelver pit. <laughs> I think anyone who's involved with the shelver pit is okay. I think they're <laughs> they get a pardon. I think I think anyone. And the thing is, when you are doing anything insane like that, like how many how many are in the shelver pit? Ten. 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 You got to metric. Yeah. Wild. Ten. Uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like the Nokia game of Snake. And um, I had to like curl around the room. <laughs> it's also one of those things where like once you get did you go like, full circle? Once you get no no it was straight just line. straight line. But outside indoors, uh, it was indoors, uh, pretty what? much the whole length of the room, and uh, and it got to a point where once you convince about five people that it's happening, uh, then it's easy. Right, the first few were hard. But then <laughs> I love that implies that you started the whole. <laughs> yeah, <idea. absolutely. laughs> also, you just because of human shelverpede, you know that someone came up with the name <laughs> first. Yeah, and, and then, then was like, "Oi, fellas, <laughs> you want know to take this bucks party to 11? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right. Because if, if they're like, you know, what we should do is we should all get on our knees and put pills up each other's assholes. We're like, that sounds awful. It's like but, it's called a human shelverpede. But, well, we have to do it. But the thing is, the, but the argument. It gets funny. I won't. You have enough guys on board with doing it, mm. then the other guys look gay if they don't do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Huh? laughs> I just like. What are you a coward? Every, Everyone's doing it. Every time we get to like this point on a podcast, I just think about how everyone who didn't go to an all boys private school is confused. <laughs> but everybody who did is like, yeah, of course. <laughs> like obviously, <laughs> of course, I shoved an ecstasy tablet up my mate's ass at a party. Because it'd be weird not to. We were all doing it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you think I'm going to be the ninth guy and be like, nah? What, you think I'm going to film? <laughs> 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 That's way weirder, dude. But it ended up being the go- the weirdest one was the guy who objected and then left the party entirely. Because it's one thing to be like, nah, I'm not going to participate in your insane human Did anyone shop. not participate? Yeah, this one guy refused to participate. And then left. And then, uh, and then a couple of, I think a couple of guys said nah, but they still hung around or they all mm. just watched the insanity mm. but, uh, and wanked. But, um, <laughs> <they> were, <laughs> but one guy- But each other off. They wanted to be a part of a team. But one guy <laughs> objected and uh, then he left his, like, one of his best mates' parties. Wow. And uh, that for me was the warning sign of uh, Closet Gay. Has he come out subsequent? Uh, no, I think he's married to a woman. I mean, You're slightly mannish. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the thing you shouldn't have said on the podcast. <laughs> Everything else is fine. Hey, he said slightly. <laughs> slightly mannish. Just they can swap wedding rings. What do you want? He's <laughs> got big hands. <laughs> Possible Adam's apple. <laughs> 
I'm just saying I wouldn't want her shelving me. <laughs> I don't want to be in front of her in the center bed. Uh, dude. I might get a few DMs about this podcast. It's really funny because like, I, I hope you guys are doing the same thing. Well, you've obviously already done it, but I'm just going through like my group of friends and I'm like, who would I like behind and in front? Mm. Oh yeah. You know, who would I like to shelve and who would I like to shelve me? Oh mm. God. I want a, I want a gentle, dexterous man. Surely the person shelving you is kind of irrelevant, right? Like- that's their hair. Uh, yeah, but you it's need like someone with surgical precision. Um, yeah, you mates, know, that's not a doctor. Too probably get him. But then also the guy in front of you, you want a guy who's not going to have too hairy an ass. That's so more the thing. You, so you can see. And clean. You can, so you can get the clean. clean. It's going to be clean. Clean, that's, not too hairy, so you can true. just get the job done. In many ways, you probably. <laughs> many, w- I probably want my closet at home if I have a man in front of me. <laughs> how many foggers have we lost at this point? I like, would say minus one. <laughs> <laughs> He's left and gone home. <laughs> hey, if, if anyone stopped listening, closeted homophobe. <laughs> yeah, what are you? Due to Hamo's logic, figure it out. <laughs> Go home to your mannish wives. <laughs> uh, take a long, hard look at yourself. <laughs> look, look yeah. if there was a mother breastfeeding while did a human shelf appeared, I would let her stay if she wanted. If you're not going to take a long, hard look at my asshole, take a long, hard look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because I've just done this joke about Bucks parties being lame and then I'm like that sounds better yeah. <laughs> you're gonna come to the right party <laughs> it's yeah. just like that sounds better than go-karting like I'm sorry it does <laughs> well you still start with the go-karting right you still start with that <laughs> but then we escalate we escalate <laughs> we got it done drugs help oh, oh no yeah. you did it sober did you Eleven <laughs> thirty a.m. Hammer pitches the human Alcohol. shelf appeared. Well, one p.m. Temp and bowling. When you've done, done enough drugs and you've done enough party, you like you get to that point. Be like, what haven't we done? Mm. And uh, that was on the list. I mean, I think <laughs> I think I think we all need to know: was it before or after the movie came out? <laughs> 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 the guy actually, who left is like, dude, I'm not homophobic. I just got a great idea for a film. <laughs> <laughs> Final draft, ordered it in the Uber. Let's go. Let's fucking move, brother. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, that is good gear. <laughs> it is fun. Like, cause I, you know, during the shows at Melbourne, I was like, who listens to the podcast? And mm. people say, yeah. And it's people that you would never expect to be happy to listen to the human shelf of it <laughs> be discussed for 10 minutes. Uh, what I'm saying is you shouldn't judge people, you know? Uh, well, <laughs> what was that? Have I shared too much? Nah. Yeah. Whatever. Gay chicken, dude. It's fair. Gay chicken. It it's, is a, it's another version of gay chicken. It's just a more extreme version. Dude, it's gay rooster, I reckon. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much the noise I'd be making. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. also it also does clue into you like well we couldn't kiss but yeah you can shove some stuff up my ass mm. that's not gay <laughs> there's nothing gay about helping that up. is really funny it's the <laughs> idea of like you want to kiss your mate on the lips to get a beer nah <laughs> <laughs> want to help your mate ingest ecstasy up the butthole do you, uh, want, to, do you sh- want to like an entire five-a-side football game <laughs> to stop and shove pills in each other's <laughs> ass <laughs> the bounce is like you're a couple proof you're like well I'm gonna have to, we're going to have to find seven more mats <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we're not a we're not a thruple. We're a centuple. Is that ten? Non, non-tuple? <laughs> That's nine. Yeah, but what? Deck a, deck tuple. Deck tuple. Deck tuple. Deck tuple. Yeah. yeah, just a deck tuple of blokes <laughs> having, a, having a quiet Saturday. <laughs> prove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll fucking prove it, mate. Is that one of those ones where like there's like a photo floating around that just exists and everyone's like, God, I hope that. Of the kiss or the or the shelver pad? Or the shelver pad. Absolutely no photos are allowed. No, absolutely not. No. Um, because that way it is plausible deniability. Because mm. we're like, what the, that's insane. That's not a thing to happen. We're just going to hope none of us start a podcast. <laughs> 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 you guys have, I've got a couple of guys that I know from school who I remember vividly on Facebook seeing photos of them at a party in blackface. Oh. And just being like, that's someone has that out there somewhere right now. What are they doing? Something that this could cost them, or is it just kind of like whatever? I imagine there's not many. Th- well, I don't know because it's like, how significant does what you is what you're doing have to be for that to cost you? You know what I mean? Like, is anyone outside of the public eye at at risk of that? I imagine if you get sent around, you're like work all stuff. You're in trouble no matter what you do, right? I don't know. I guess I've never had a job. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Like. It's like, hey, that guy did blackface in 2006. And you're like, oh, 
Is that before Obama? Yeah. Should, was it fine then? Should he not be prime minister anymore? <laughs> and Canada's think, like, no, it's like, fine. It was, was on Australian TV then, wasn't I think, it? Yeah. I think it was hey, on hey, Saturday. That's true. I think most people still don't give a shit. About blackface? Well, about like if, if one of your colleagues was like in the in like the staff email each week, there was like a, a leaked photo of them in mm. blackface from like 20 <laughs> years ago. Each week? <laughs> well, You're you not sp- going to guess who it is this week. <laughs> 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 but I think like, I, I used to do for my um, old company that I was working Here we go. like um, the like uh, uh, news roundup each week, and it was just like banter, right? Mm. It would just be like funny photos and memes sending up people in the office. Dude, you were the funny guy in the office, weren't you? Uh, well, I got asked by my boss to do this. That's what I mean. You yeah. were like actually that guy, the funny oh. guy in the office. Funny guy. Well, I knew I was a comedian as well. This was uh, this was recently. Oh, this was, this oh, this was, is like in this your po- post jail PR. No, nah, this is post jail. <laughs> not, um, not PR, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know. I've seen some of the ones that was being sent around before me, and some of the ones I probably sent around were p- p- perhaps questionable. Mm. Um, where you're like, if if this company was big enough to have a HR person, they would probably be getting a few emails. Sure, from you <laughs> <laughs> about them. <laughs> being like, you're just going to let me email this out? <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I think people. Uh, when, when it's someone really famous, we like to make it into a bigger scandal. But yeah. if it was just your boss, like your lo- particularly like, what, at a mining company or a construction company, what are they going to be They're like, oh, it's pretty funny, Dave. <laughs> it's not blackface, it's coal. <laughs> 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 You're wasting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just like, because it'd be, I, what about like an old person? Like... They're like 70, but they're like running for prime minister or something. Mm. And it's like, here's them in blackface in like the 80s. And you're like, ah, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Trudeau got away with it. Yeah. Trudeau got away with it. And surely, um, like, what? Canada is the wokest Commonwealth nation, you yeah. reckon? But also, like, because of him, right? Kind of. Like, or is he a symptom of it? But you know what I mean? Like, he's kind of the face of what he's the blackface. He's black the blackface. Of of black <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I don't know. It was a different time. I do remember at the time, I do remember being 18, like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And now I'm like, I'm very glad I never did that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm covering his bases here. <laughs> but there was a guy at my school who looked a lot like me who did it. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and he also, he was called Tom as well. <laughs> very strange, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm trying to think if anyone, I swear someone I know, like it was one of those ones like a house party. Like someone kind of went with that and then everyone was just like, huh. <laughs> like these days, like, remember that time that, that they did that, right? And they're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> like they still like, you know, make out at the party, you know, like it's not a deal breaker at all. Mm. Like chicks are like, I mean, that guy's, that guy's pretty, who's the, who's the new guy? Who's hot? <laughs> did you see Sarah did blackface as well? No, no, she just made out with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's she's mixed face now. <laughs> mixed face. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's good gear. <laughs> Ugh, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't know how much of this we can follow. <laughs> we follow very, after human show, human show <laughs> it's very hard. There's a reason that movie didn't have a sequel. <laughs> or did, did it? It, it yeah, did have a sequel. It's, three. it's oh. called the final segment. There's three of them. Actually? I, I, I thought I, it was a joke. No, no. There was one they did in a prison where he got all, they got all the inmates into a giant, like, never-ending shelf of... Uh, shelf of <laughs> centipede. Human <laughs> Centipede, a film trilogy. Maybe we go. Which I think is very funny. Jesus. I haven't seen any of them, but maybe we should have a flog marathon. Oh, I really don't want to do that. All the centipede... Is it, is it just, like, gore? Like, is it just, like, just gross out, like... Because what, they're shitting in each other's mouths. They're attached from mouth to anus, mouth to anus. But what, what's the plot? Uh, Does it just follow the shit from the front to the end? Some German doctor um, has some people that like rock up to his house and he, their phone's dead and they need help and so he like offers to help them but then he like drugs them and attaches them all to each other. Mouth to anus, mouth to anus for some reason. <laughs> um, for some reason And uh, that's Does anyone know that any, Has anyone seen any of them? No uh, I think I did see Most I, of I, one I think, of them I think I speak for the floggers When I say If there's a spoiler alert on this 
I think it's fun. <laughs> so, oh, man, I was waiting to wash that. <laughs> what? Uh, but, yeah, I don't know how they, they've milked it out for three, but I know that the centipede, uh, the, the, the only real thing they could think of to do was to extend the centipede from, like, three people to, like, 100, 200 by the end of it. Right. Which is, like... Well, it's just, like, the film is just him sewing them on. Like, well, nah! like, no, I don't yeah. think it's... I don't know if it's the same guy by the end. It's, like, the... the, the oh, this is in the trilogy. Taken on the philosophy. Yeah, the, this is in the trilogy. Is the, is, the sa- is the original centipede still there? Uh, does, does it live? I think, I think they right. die. I think they, yeah, they might. There's a spoiler. Uh, mm. I think for what is probably going to be a terrible movie, I think it's worth it just to know that the human shelvipede happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think that justifies the existence of everyone who worked on that movie. <laughs> it's like I was just trying to inspire people. Yeah. Follow their dreams. <laughs> well, it, there's a lot of work that goes into executing a human shelvipede <laughs> in Help. terms of like timing, coordination, you know, uh, teamwork. Drugs, <laughs> <laughs> leadership. You can only assume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there we, we go. How? All right. I just we, we got to end soon. But was it pitched as, "Hey, we should shelve some pingers." Hey, wouldn't it be funny if you shelved him? Wouldn't it be funny if we all shelved each other at the same time? We should do a human shelvipede, boys. Let's do it. It started, I think, as like three or four of us agreeing, and then it was like, "Do it! As you join us, you fucking dog." And then was that was that the noun? <laughs> <laughs> was dog the word? <laughs> so it started as a small group, and then once you got people on board, it was easier to then like you know mm. pitch the next, the next, the next until you get to ten. So you get to 10 yeah. and then you stop because that's how many pills you had. Well, that's how many people agreed to do it uh, in a group of about 14 people. I got, I got to say, in, it, previously I've always respected kind of like cult leaders. I'm like, oh yeah, convincing people to do something that crazy must be hard. Nah. Nah. You know? Nah. You, you get, get a, four people being you, like, this is a great idea. And everyone's like, maybe you, it is a good idea. You get a few of the weaker minds on board <laughs> early and then uh, and then you can be like, you're, you're not going to do it. These guys are doing it. You're, 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 you look weird now. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't want to look weird. <laughs> I want to look normal with my hand wrapped around a pill inside some guy's ass. Yeah. <laughs> and another guy doing the same to me. Right. So, anyway, we'll recreate this one day. <laughs> <laughs> Live app. <laughs> flog Cabin 1000. You've heard it now. <laughs> the Human Flogopede. The Human, the human Flogopede, flog episode 1000. Ugh. It's just. Just the. the I think for me, it's the small talk in the line for the bathroom after. <laughs> Everyone's got hands to wash. There's only one basin in the Airbnb. It's like, that was pretty funny though, right? <laughs> don't, don't look at me, bro. <laughs> don't look at me. No, nah, it's weird. No, nah, but it is funny though. It's like, seriously, yeah. don't touch me again. Like That was just for that, all right? <laughs> I mean, the reward comes when you do get a great high off actually shopping <laughs> in a, uh, MDMA, right? So like, it is, a, it is quite a good high. Mm. Um, Compared to uh, other more conventional ways of ingesting <laughs> drugs, so the reward is is there, uh, and then you soon forget how it came to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still traumatized by it twenty years later, but <laughs> and you soon forget how it came to pass. It's like if you read the last page of a book and that was the final line, and you're like, well, this sounds like a classy novel. <laughs> you work look at the cover. The human, the human <laughs> shelf. Dude, you're just shelf? picturing them just like going to the Salmon Dance Crookers <laughs> remix. How did I get high? I don't remember, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah, yeah, boys. You've had the Men in Black, the men in black device. <laughs> <laughs> Do it on me, please. <laughs> please. Erase the memory forever. The ten, the ten of you run into the one guy that left the next day and he's like, how was last night? It was fine, David. <laughs> Stop asking. We didn't actually do it. It was just a bit. <laughs> it's just a joke, man. Hey, we should do it again. Just the two of us. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, good gear. All right. Well, look, that's it. Sure. We're done. Is the name of the episode The Human Shelver Pete? Yep. Hammo? Absolutely. What else is it going to be? <laughs> Imagine when people here is talking about the baby earlier. They're like, how are they going to get from here to here? <laughs> it's a rocky road uh, in the cabin. God help us all. Uh, yeah. It's funny as hell. Uh, all right. Thanks for... Dude, it's good. The, the, the three the three frogs back. Back. Back in Sydney good on a home turf. I ate, I ate Charlie Chargrills earlier today. Oh, Thought fuck. of you. 
Mary's like, take a photo, send it to Tom. And I'm like, I think it's fine. It's a chain. <laughs> I'm staying off the burgers and I'm staying off the beers for 100 days. Yeah, do you want to announce this? Well, do you want accountability amongst the floggers? Yep, I'm doing 100, be- 100 days, no beers because, uh, well, my uh, health is uh, declining and I also am fat. Um, <laughs> Dude, you look great. No, I, put I found on, your asshole I, so quickly. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I put on so much weight uh, in general, but also in Melbourne. I put on like four. Four kilos. Mm. And if your last diet exercise is in to go by, I can't wait to celebrate 97 days without <laughs> drinking. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I do like you. We've always pitched doing the centurion on the show. Now you're doing 100 days. This is like an anti-centurion. Mm. Um, and then maybe we should celebrate the end of the 100 days not drinking with a centurion. Yeah. Maybe this should be the time. That sounds great. Nice. There we go. You're going to hit the fucking floor, I'll brother. I'll be pissed as fuck. Very yeah, quickly. dude. Mm. Uh, all right, thanks for joining us in the cabin. Uh, it grows every week. Please keep telling people. And if you haven't realized, the Melbourne Comedy Festival has ended, but the other comedy festivals are happening. Uh, Hammer, you're the first one in Sydney, right? Yeah, next week, the 1st to the 5th of May. Nice. And then Tom and I are the final weekend yep. 16, in Sydney. I'm um, 16, 17, 18. 17, 18, 19, Sydney Comedy Festival. Go check out some shows. The guests we've had on have shows at the Sydney Comedy Festival, except for Milo. So just Connor? Connor and Mickey and... Oh, Mickey. Um, oh, Amos doesn't either. My bad. Uh, but yeah, and then Brizzy Comedy Fest as well. We're up there. Yep. 9th to the 12th of May, I'll be there. 2nd to the 5th. Um, but yeah, uh, stay flogged up. Uh, what's the other thing we say? Check the dodgems. <laughs> <laughs> we should cut check the dodgems. It's not as good as stay Dude, flogged up. Dude, people like check the dodgems. Check the dodgems. When I, when I was talking about the f- highlight moments, I thought Connor's crocodile alligator joke was one of the funniest things we've said on the podcast. Yeah, that's good stuff. Someone was like, Dude, that check the dodgems episode was the best episode. Oh, wow. People, yeah. people love the dodgems and checking them. Yeah. yeah. When, they're so, full of, when they're full of drugs. So, Tom, it looks like you've got something to say. Check the dodgems. Stay flogged up. Bye. <laughs>